In my previous video, we talked about the break-off shot. The object being to strike the end red, sending the white around the angles, back to the bulk area. Hopefully getting the cue ball to nestle on the bulk cushion. Now the fact that it's on or near the bulk cushion, right, makes the shot fairly difficult anyway. But if we can get it in the right position, i.e. behind the green ball, then that cuts down options as well. So we've got two benefits. One, the shot, it can only hit the top of the white ball, so that's very difficult anyway. Secondly, behind the green ball cuts down all sorts of options. What I forgot to mention, and I've been reminded of it, is that you can do the same thing if you place the cue ball between the brown and the green. Now obviously the difference is that you're sending the cue ball around the left hand angles and this time hopefully nestling on the cushion behind the yellow ball. Again making the shot very difficult because you can only hit the top and the fact that we've got behind the yellow ball equally cuts down options. So we've, we've got two bonuses there. While we're talking about the break-off, one of the things that intrigues me a little is the amount of anomalies I see in setting up the triangle of reds. When I watch the recreational players out in the club, the, the apex red will be a mile away from the pink, the, the triangle of reds will be at an angle, all sorts of anomalies. In this video, I'd like to show you how to set them up correctly. Prior to that though, in my video on billiards, I pose this question. This is a question that um, Paul Collier, one of the top world snooker referees, asked me. And I'll be perfectly honest, I did not know the answer. He had to tell me the answer. So the question is, what has appeared at every snooker championship since reg records began and has never ever been used. So here is the answer. And it's the bolt line, or rather that portion of the bolt line, from this cushion to the yellow spot, and from the side cushion there to the green spot. It has no relevance whatsoever in the game of snooker. Now before you jump down my throat on this, let me just say to you that Arguably, there is no such thing as a snooker table. You are playing snooker on a billiard table. Now, billiards was the first game, and snooker evolved on that billiard table, all right? And has since obviously taken over from the game of billiards a little. Moving on, this is how to set the triangle of reds up correctly. If you've got the benefit of one of these triangles, just get the reds into a sh shape of a triangle with your arms, ease them away from the cushion. Place the triangle on top. You've got a little pointer inside. Yeah, you just place that on the black spot. And then from there, just ease the triangle forward until that same pointer reaches the pink spot. Okay. Then ease the balls forward with your fingers, just make sure they're all touching. Lift it up, right, and there we go. Ready to start the game of snooker. That's when you've got the benefit of one of these things. If you haven't got the benefit of one of the professional triangles, and we have to revert back to the conventional triangle, not a problem at all. But one thing I hate to see is this business. They place the triangle in position and then they start doing this business. Well, it's bad policy because A, it's unnecessary and B, it can damage the clock. So please don't do that. Just form a triangle with your arms. That's quite simple to do. Slide it slightly away from the cushion. Place your triangle over it and then slide it up. Now some of these triangles, they have studs on, on the base, so you can just 
slide it up and you glide in on these so you're not really disturbing the nap. And it's a good idea to get a triangle with these studs in. But not all of them have got it. And then you've got the wood that's on the nap. And they will disturb the nap. So in that case, it's, it's beneficial just to place it over and then lift the triangle off there a little bit when you push it up. If you've got the studs, as I said, it's not necessary. Right, so now we've got them in position. We slide it up. Now one of the things that I see very, very often is to get this triangle at a little bit of an angle. Well, they're going to break incorrectly when you play the break off shot. So it's a good idea to concentrate on these three reds. The apex red, this red in the center here, and this red in the center of the bottom section there. And just get those three reds in line with the black, the pink, and the blue spot. And everything is in line now. Make sure they're all touching. Lift this away, and there's no problem. Okay? One other thing while we're at it, I have seen people setting the triangle up. We've got the pink on the spot, and they've put the, these balls there, and they think they've uh, positioned the triangle correctly. They haven't. This red ball should be as close to the pink as possible without touching. All right, so that there is where the apex red should be. Okay? So, it can be a little tricky to judge with this, bearing in mind that the professional triangle has got a pointer. This hasn't, so you have to be a little bit careful, yeah, just to get it right. But just a little bit of practice, and it shouldn't be a problem. So we're coming there now, and you see we've, we're pretty much in the right position. Probably it should be a little bit more that way, okay? A little bit of practice, and you get it right. Now what is happening more frequently now, they use their hands. They'll place the pink on the spot. So they'll form a triangle with their arms here. And they'll move these balls, slide them up to the pink. Now this time I'm using the two reds, the apex red and this one to make sure everything's in line. Okay, so we're there. And they get the remaining reds Slide them up with the rest of the rounds till they're touching, till everything is touching. Nothing wrong with that, right, providing you do it correctly. Three ways to set the triangle up.